John Waddell. An ordinary first name for the most uncommon man who gave up a lifetime of comfort in exchange for a life wandering the streets of Astoria. Waddell grew up in the San Francisco area. He was educated in Berkeley and New York. His father was a neurologist. His mother was a trained nutritionist at John Hopkins. He is the eldest with two younger brothers, James, a doctor in California, and Steve is a teacher in Astoria. Waddell says he grew up carefree. His family didn't live like kings, but they never had to worry either. How Waddell transformed from a person who was born into the American dream to Astoria's most recognizable homeless figure, the locals call Helmut John, is both a heartbreak and a mystery. The kind of mystery that creates urban legends. This story provides some insight into Waddell's background but it does not have an explanation that will satisfy those who want a definitive answer to the question, why would one deliberately choose to give up comfort and security for the life of a drifter? There is none. His life is not a straight line. It is filled with fragments, detours, unreliable answers and closed doors. However, there are portions of his history that Waddell selectively tells people about himself, almost like a script to preserve the man he once was, because he himself is fully aware that his life is a puzzle filled with questions and pieces that don't always fit. Here are the facts that Waddell wants people to know about him. His full name is John Albert Waddell. He's 73 years old, and he still has a driver's license. He earned a master's degree in physics from University of California at Berkeley and business from New York University. He has taught math, physics, computer science. He has programmed computers for global oil companies. In his self-described golden years, Waddell traveled around Europe, and he's been to 35 states. Yeah, I lived in San Francisco, New York, Detroit, Chicago. I lived in the big, the big towns, L.A. But I, I don't, I don't live there now. Now you're overseas too, though, aren't you? Yes, sir. North Africa. <laughs> I don't want those radical hotbeds. One of the three countries I was in, one is considered safe, wealthy. The other is considered too radical to set foot in. And the third one has a very high dangerous warning to set foot in all the everybody. Bless the Lord, the Lord is on them take John was paid well for his work. I, I was making fifty to seventy thousand for, for a, a decade now, uh, for fourteen years. And then all of a sudden they laid me off the guys that used to answer the phone answer the phones and over the next job didn't, didn't call back anymore. <laughs> These facts provide more questions than answers to the root cause for the downward transformation. <laughs> this is what's scary. You see, I'm, I, 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 I didn't grow up this way, you know. Until my father got sick and died, and I got Oscar knee issues. Yeah, no. Waddell's father died of a heart problem when he was only in his mid-40s. Although there is no direct correlation of this devastating loss to his decision to opt out of a normal life. Waddell often references this period of life, but he never speaks about it directly. I got two brothers, the second brother, Steve. He split, moved up here in the, in the 70s. Then Ma, she split, moved up here in the 80s. Yours truly moved up here to the end of the 90s. It's like seven, eight, nine, bingo. The, the one that the one that never was left, James, he doesn't want to leave California. It was about 27 years ago when Waddell just stopped working. He began collecting a pension and moved with his mother to Forest Grove, about 80 miles from Astoria, though this arrangement did not last. His mother had a restraining order against him from his alleged profanity, 
reckless behaviors with fires and property damage. Waddell was diagnosed schizophrenic by the court. It was around this turbulent time that he stopped taking necessary medications and decided to live the life of a wanderer. Home is where he laid his head. No one knows why. His family's not talking, and Waddell never explained. He rejects help from doctors, refuses shelters from those who wanted to see him out of the cold and the danger. He apparently has money from his pension that can afford him his daily comforts. A couple of newspapers. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So tomorrow I can get a copy of the Daily Astorium and the for 150. And two bucks will get me a copy of the Oregonian here, and I'll be considered a form local Ah, Hey, good, 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 back to our 17. Is that a yawn? Yes, yeah. He has his rounds he makes to get his morning cup of coffee. He likes mocha. Sometimes it's a four shot cappuccino. Waddell drifted back and forth from Forest Grove to Astoria for many years. But he always returns to Astoria where he feels comfortable, which makes him a familiar figure to so many people who essentially have grown up with him as a fabric of our community. Astoria is the town that affectionately gave Waddell his moniker, Helmet John, as a reference to the red helmet that Waddell often wears as his protective device from the people who have heard him in larger cities. But mainly it's a reminder that he has seen some really bad things in his life. No, it's not It's not a question of one as being safer, no. No, it really isn't. No, it, it's just a different set of people will, will come across who think that they can come here and find a safe place to stay. No, they are crazier. Oh. But the, the problem, no, a lot of the crazies have been jailed or taken out of town. There's, so the ones here are kind of, yeah. His signature look, in addition to the red helmet, is a big wooden carved fish that he wears as a necklace. And then with the layering of jackets, one on top of another. And when he can't layer on any more jackets, he just drapes them under his neck and he lets them hang. Almost like a walrus's tusk that drags as he walks. When he talks, there's a twinkle in his eye. And he often ends sentences with the most infectious laugh. 1900 a day. <laughs> Waddell is a charismatic person who is easy to like, even to those who have to deal with him in uncomfortable situations. Waddell estimates that he's been cited so often that he averages his fees out to be about $100 a month. I've been threatened with jail, exclusion. <laughs> I, I paid $1,250 in fines to this job this back. No way. <laughs> we as the police understand what John's way of thinking is. He understands um, when we ask him when he accumulates too many things, kind of lighten the load. Waddell is an enigma. He doesn't fit the typical homeless stereotype. He is not a panhandler. He doesn't ask for handouts and he doesn't pester people. He is friendly and talkative to people who engage with him, and he is fine with it when he gets a, hey, John, a shout from a passerby. Generally, Waddell sticks to himself, and he does his own thing. John likes to live life the way John likes to live. You know, you can't blame him for that. Um, you know, when, when John's ready to find a permanent shelter, then he will, he'll, he'll know when it's time. You had to pick one survivor probably out of, out of everybody, it would be John. Waddell is definitely more gritty than pretty. But there are many local people who have empathy for him and have accepted him just as he is. Waddell is their helmet John. And they have created a special place for him in their hearts. Hey, you want this old coat here? Yes, sir, thank you. This thing's warm as hell. It'll keep oh, I keep warm appreciate that, Bob. All right. Okay, you take care of it. Oh, and he'll look good in that, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. nobody will hit him, will it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I won't freeze in this. You got a nice warm However, 
there are also people who are not so supportive of his kind. These people find him and the homeless situation to be a nuisance, an eyesore that deters people from visiting downtown, and it drives down property values. Besides Helmut John, there was another familiar face living on the streets. Astorians knew him well. He always had a big smile and a wave. On April 13th, Charlie McKenzie, an Astoria High School graduate, an accomplished musician, and he was homeless, was found dead in a parking lot in Upper Town, and he died of natural cause. I said, Charlie, you know, because I, I got experience with what it takes to be outdoors, you know, a lot. I said, you're starting to get congested in the chest. Uh, why not go down and get a, a bottle of NyQuil? That'll clear your chest. And he did that. He lost almost everything first. He lost his wife, he lost his kids, he lost his health. And when he was in his prime, uh, he, he really gave it his all, you know. He worked hard. A lot of people then, when we lose Charlie, you know, we worry about you out here too. Oh yeah, I gotta be careful out here. Yeah, it's, it's a zoo out here. Waddell takes everything in stride. He is still out and about during this time of the coronavirus. It's interesting to hear his perspective on what he is seeing with what is happening around him. The stunted economy is reflected everywhere in Astoria. Empty storefronts, shuttered restaurants, deserted streets, hotels are empty, parking lots are empty. Every, every, other, every other building is closed or curbside only at certain hours. It's going to be this until when? September? Mm -hmm. October? Late this year. Waddell is very aware of the current situation. And he has his own thoughts on the stimulus plan to bail out America. Did the market go up or down yesterday? I, I don't even oh, know. Oh, well, we, we know the answer to that. It has to go up. Uh, no, it doesn't have to. They're in a panic mode. They were going to try and give us $1.2 trillion. They reneged on that promise. Right. And you know the vote was? The Senate vote. It was 47 yeas, 47 nays, yes and no. But five came down with Corona under impound and weren't able to vote. And the sixth one is incognito, whatever the hell that means. As the country grapples with the coronavirus, where social distancing is now the new normal, perhaps it's Waddell who is now the most equipped person to deal with this reality of no social connection, no hugging, kissing, touching, and living in isolation. The difference is Waddell deliberately distanced himself from everything and everyone that was a part of his history. But even he feels isolated with almost everything closing downtown. His routine abruptly changed, and daily conveniences are no longer available. It's like the ghost towns of the Old West. They, they closed the barber shop. I yeah. can't go to the barber shop, so I have to buy scissors. Now you're looking good, though. So it's a... Waddell is well-read, and he seemingly has no money worries. He buys his two go-to newspapers daily at Joe's Mobile. While he's in there, he'll pick up something else, like a cheesesteak sandwich, which he noticed has uh, gone up a couple of bucks in the last couple of years. So it's Friday night. What are you going to do tonight? No partying, right? I'm going to win. Yeah, I don't have any part. I'm going to eat a little extra. I'm going to go in there and buy my second, uh, well, the first one right here. The price of this just went up $2, by the way. What's that? See, look at these steaks. Yeah? I mean, they see that six ninety nine. Yeah. It used to be four ninety nine. Tasty. I'm going to buy another one. Is that your dinner? That's dinner. Yes, sir. I, got, I have my plans. Look at that sunrise. Oh, out. nice. Yeah. Sunrise, sunset. Man, you better get busy legal marketing. The virus also created hysteria with people emptying grocery shelves and hoarding toilet paper. Waddell has been doing that for many years. The concept of being prepared 
and keeping things you just might need is nothing new to him. Waddell saves everything and anything he can. Old bike tires, old newspapers, used trash bags, pots and pans. He stores these items in a shopping cart and tattered, mismatched suitcases. These things are his world. He takes them everywhere. The logistics of traveling with them is a system that requires determination and patience. It's a process of 30 steps forward with his suitcases, 30 steps back to gather his cart with the items piled high to catch up with the other suitcases, another 30 steps forward with the suitcases and then 30 steps back to get the cart. He repeats this methodical process until he reaches his destination, wherever that may be for the day or the night. The moon is what, 2.30? Yeah, I, had, I wasn't thinking of it like that, but you're right. I have driven a car further than it is distance to the moon. Uh, but I say 2.35 to 2.70. So it was 35,000. That's an extra 10 times across America back and forth. It's 3,000 miles coast to coast. Waddell always carries with him a scientific calculator. He takes it out often to double-check his math. I had to do a little, little calculation there, but actually it makes sense. What makes Waddell interesting is that when he talks, one can get a glimpse into his head. There are two hemispheres, and then there's something called a corpus. There's a bridge over troubled waters that crosses between the two. Like a Simon, remember that song, Simon? Yeah. Like a bridge over the waters, I will lay you down. He could be absolutely lucid, smart and accurate one moment. And then we'll veer off into his own world where he talks about numbers and stats that just sometimes don't add up. It makes one wonder if he is a man trapped within his own brilliance and somehow can't connect the data in his mind. I just kind of picture that piano in my mind and I just kind of run my fingers over the keys and the music flows into the brain. Into something tangible and real. Homelessness is not unique to Astoria. It's a town of less than 10,000 people, and it has its share of struggles with homeless and lack of housing issues. Somehow, though, people feel protective of Waddell. He is a fixture of Astoria. This town understands and accepts him for the man that he is today, not for the man he could have been. You know, a lot of people use the term homeless. I like to use the term really unhoused because Astoria is their home. Astoria is John's home. And a home is where you're loved and you love in return. And Astoria is truly John's home. There's even a Facebook page, Friends of John Waddell. It's a way for those who care to keep track of his whereabouts and make sure he is okay. And people pitch in to get the things that he needs, like a warm coat or a pair of boots. Lo and behold, oh, no. there you are. Oh, yeah. What the hell are you doing? Waddell can be found in his preferred locations in downtown or upper town. He doesn't mind living on the streets, but he does have a dream of owning a home. Waddell occasionally buys lottery tickets, hoping to hit the jackpot. He knows his chances of winning by his own calculations are pretty slim. But like most people, he too has a dream of what he would do if he gets lucky. I'm wondering, did you get yourself your ticket yet? I, I'm, I'm not buying today, so I'm buying tomorrow's ticket. Cool. All right, so if you got 150, what would you do with it? I, I can't ask that right now. I'd, <laughs> except I'd move off the street immediately and buy some real estate in a car. Yeah. yeah. You'd buy a car? Oh, yeah. Shit, aren't you too old to drive? No, I got a license. I got an active license. When was the last time you drove a car? I don't want to answer that, but I have an active <laughs> license. Waddell likes to listen to music. He played the piano for 12 years, an hour each day. And music continues to be a part 
of who he is. And what was the first tune that you laid down on the keyboards that you said, damn, I know how to play now? For a leash. Romantic. Tchaikovsky, Chopin, Kavalevsky, Prokofiev, Beethoven. It's called the Romantic period. Sometime in the 1800s. Let me give you a shot at uh, 100, 150 mil. I mean, what the heck? All right. So if you won 100, would you retire? What would you do? I'm trying to get out of retirement. I am retired. I've been retired for 20 years now. That's too young to retire. I didn't mind being retired 21, 24, <laughs> yeah, I don't mind, I didn't mind being retired for seven years, by the time I made it 21, that's three times not too long. A man in his prime ought to be able to, you know, kick back and then go back to work. All right, so if you if you won the money then, you'd, you'd come out of retirement and go yeah. back to work. Yes, sir, and I'd hire others too. Yes, sir. Would you go out and buy yourself a piano? Yes, sir. A, a grand piano. But for now, he's just missing his small transistor radio and hearing international news. He wistfully thinks about owning one once again. Maybe he'll get one when he wins the jackpot. How you doing, Derek? Hey, nice meeting you. How's that, brother? Hello there. <laughs> God, be nice. It's unforgettable when talking with Helmut John, especially his optimism. He is a man who doesn't want much. Maybe a pair of dry socks. Those are my socks. I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're good gloves, huh? Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I wore them on my feet, and I got some extra socks. And, I, I'm... and he wants to take a DNA test to find out more about himself because that's important, he says. Uh, no, I, I, will, I will follow up on that. That's very, very important. But overall, he's happy and content. Waddell is a composer of his own life. He is free and living his life the way that he wants to live. It's not the norm, but it's authentic, and he's very much in control of his destiny. Waddell is often smiling and laughing, as if he's on to something good that only he knows about. Perhaps the takeaway of this film is that don't feel sorry for him. Waddell's got life figured out. He's the one with the secret sauce. Be yourself. Keep laughing. Stay positive and enjoy music, even in the worst of times. Sure. Yeah. Let her go, John. Helmet John, thank you for reminding us to keep on laughing. <laughs> no, 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 baby. You better get hey, what kind of coffee you want? Don't forget your other camera. Oh, crap, you bet. What kind of coffee do you like? Uh, I don't think they have the cappuccinos there. Coffee with a little cream and sugar in it. Monsieur. And croissant. What croissant? Oh. croissant. <laughs> okay, au revoir. Au revoir, bien John. See you later, Big John. <laughs> 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 I didn't see anything too weird today, thank God. Thank God. <laughs>